brief uh, introduction about myself. So I am Shivangi Agarwal and I am a qualified actuary. I have a six plus years of teaching experience in Actuators Educational Institute and I have also uh, worked in few consulting companies um, and a startup company. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about actuarial science. Let me move to the very first page. These are a few All India Rank holders from our institute. Few qualified and associate actuaries. Okay, let's now talk about actuarial science. So what is an actuary or who is an actuary? An actuary is someone who calculates financial and commercial impact and valuation of uncertainty and risk of future events by considering the following situations. So we have financial, economic, social, demographic, technological and all the other factors that you can see and hear and know of. So where do we work actually? Now there are, if I just divide it into three parts, there are three sections where we can work for example let's talk about the traditional field where we as qualified actuaries or we as student actuaries work in the traditional field we have the very first is life and general insurance so when i say a life insurance for example anyone in your family might have bought a whole life insurance or may ha may have bought a term assurance what do you mean by these terms so basically if i buy a term assurance which means that if i die up to an age let's say, suppose i have taken a term assurance till age 99 so if i die below the age of 99 then my family members my dependents will be receiving a amount of money. So for that, I will be paying something called as premium annually or quarterly or sometimes it can be monthly as well. Now these premiums, how do we calculate this premium is what we do as an actuary. Now for example, I am a 26 year old female, right? So I am going and buying a term assurance. What should be the premium that should be applicable to me? They ask you a few questions, whether you are a smoker or a non-smoker, whether you are self-employed or are you um, working as an employee somewhere or uh, you are having your own business, you are a freelancer, uh, in which part of the country do you stay, what kind of occupation you have and what is your salary. So these are the different things that they ask you and on the basis of that they charge you a premium. So, for example, if I am a smoker, so obviously the probability of me dying will be increasing. And so the premium that they will charge me will be higher, right? And what is this premium? This premium is something which I am paying to the company. Now the company, the life insurance company is charging the same premium to all its policy holders. For example, I am taking a term assurance of 1 crores that if I die in the next 20 years, my family members will be receiving this 1 crore. So what should be the premium? Every every year, let's suppose I am paying a premium of 20,000. And if I die next year, the company only received 40,000 from me, but they will be paying 1 crore to my family. Right? How are they getting that 1 crore when they have just taken 40,000 from me? This is because they have insured these many people, hundreds of people and out of that they calculate the probability of dying. That is out of these thousands of people, how many people will actually die and how much claim amount how much of this 1 crore and how much this claim amount they will actually pay and accordingly the premium is calculated how the probability affects if my probability of dying increases maybe because i am a smoker maybe because i am into some hazardous occupation then they will obviously charge me a higher premium right next we talk about pensions so in pension what do you see you see people 
who are above retirement age they receive something called as premium right uh, something called as pension sorry so what is this pension all about now when the person is working at that point of time the employee and the employer they both are contributing something to a corpus right in that cor and that corpus is invested somewhere and then once the employee retires the employee receives a pension maybe monthly maybe quarterly and maybe annually so that corpus where should we invest that for how long the person will be alive after the retirement for example at the age of 60 i retire so maybe what is my life expectancy will i die at the age of 70 or will i die at the age of 75 accordingly they calculate how much payout needs to be given to me as a retired employee so all these calculations are done by us as an actually how the external events like the upcoming medical advancements will improve my life expectancy we have general insurance like motor insurance we have fire insurance all these things the premium calculations the payout everything is done by us these are all the traditional fields that i'm talking about now let's also talk about something related to finance so we have credit risk now all of you might have heard about the very uh you know infamous case of nirav modi we have kingfisher uh, so all these people what they did they took loan huge loan from these banks they were not able to pay and they just moved out of the country what happened in such a case to this bank now this bank had given a part of the uh, had given some loan amount to these people now these people defaulted on their loans and went out now for example you have let's say, suppose a bank has a limited amount of money which money they give that money they give it to the uh, people who come to borrow right now there are people who save their money in the banks right now if the bank is paying out a loan the savers the people who come and save their money in the bank they expect the bank to repay their money back in some time if the lend if the borrowers are not paying back the money to the bank how the bank will pay the money back to the savers and so at the end who is losing maybe the savers are losing and so in order to build that gap what banks do in order to avoid these kind of credit losses bank evaluates the credit worthiness of this particular borrower whether the borrower will be able to repay the loan if i go and take a home and home loan for example i go and take a mortgage they will see how much i'm earning uh, how many dependents i have what is the value of my property do i have any other properties with me all these things we evaluated did i take any loan previously was i able to pay back my loan previously what is my sibyl score all these things will be evaluated and then accordingly i will be paid out a loan of a specific amount with a specific interest rate right all these calculations was done by us uh, as an actuary these are some traditional fields now let's talk about some non-traditional fields as well so let's just suppose the most upcoming non-traditional field is data analysis and modeling you might have recently heard about uh, people moving into the data analyst field what did they do so nowadays we have lot of data with us right data is a new oil now these data are being evaluated analyzed by the companies to generate further revenue let's say talk about netflix when you open a netflix you will see that there are some uh, very uh, prominent uh, suggestions maybe movies maybe series which you tend to open and you watch those suggestions will be different for you and for me it will depend upon the demographic my age my gender where i live in what was my search history all of these are being analyzed and modeled and accordingly my search history my uh, feed will look like so that is what again we as a actually do these are all non-traditional uh, events now for example there is something called as risk management nowadays there are a lot of banks there are a lot of investment houses also hiring actual uh, students for example if you need to evaluate a particular project uh, if a company wants to invest in a particular project 
will i be getting my money back from this project when will i get money back from this project what will be my profitability uh, where will will there be any kind of cash flow crunch um what uh, different uh, uh, legalities are there so all these things are being taken care by an actuary <clears throat> there are some emerging fields as well for example we talk about climate change so there is something called as climate modeling that we do how the we are not bothered about the um let's you know uh, don't use your air conditioners or don't do that what we are bothered is about the financial risk that we will be having because of these of the climate change for example if i tell you because of the climate change what is happening areas where we used to see huge rainfall now we are seeing a drought areas where we used to see drought we are seeing huge rainfalls like what happened in dubai recently so this climate change will affect what this climate change will affect the farmers if farmers are not able to produce their crops properly this will increase the price of the food grain which will in turn affect the inflate uh, a lead to inflation and again this will affect the costs of my company so everything is interlinked how climate change will affect my company indirectly in terms of cost profitability and financial burden all of these things are modeled and evaluated by us as an actuary and we advise the companies on how to take measures and steps so that they can reduce their financial burden these are a few different fields where you can work and it does not matter if you come from um, you know bcom background or from a bsc background or from a ba background anyone who just has a basic knowledge of mathematics statistics can pursue this course so let's talk about who can do this course now who can become an actuary just self evaluate yourself do you like basic numbers are you having basic knowledge in mathematics are you having basic knowledge of statistics and are you willing to contribute next 4 to 5 years of your life to this particular course and study consistently every day for 3 to 4 hours if yes then yes this course is for you so anyone any student who is consistent who likes mathematics who likes numbers who uh, may not be very good with mathematics and statistics but have some interest in that knows how to uh, is having a problem solving mindset can definitely pursue actuarial science so anyone coming from any field any background can pursue this course all it needs is dedication patience and hard work Let's talk about what is the entire course curriculum. So in the entire course we have 13 papers that you have to appear for. If we divide these 13 papers it can be divided into four levels. The very first level which is considered as the core principle papers this has seven papers in it. CM1, CM2, CS1, CS2, CB1, CB2 and CB3. If I just individually quickly discuss about every paper, CM one is financial mathematics, which involves um, Excel. So we have Excel and R programming also included in our software. When I say Excel, or whatever you do in theory, everything is then done same on Excel. Whatever you do in your theory is done in R programming. So we have two softwares that you will learn along this journey. Out of the thirteen papers, there are five. easy comparatively easy papers and rest are a little difficult ones here the easier ones are cb1 cb2 cb3 so these are those three easy papers out of five cm1 cm2 cs1 cs2 are the core building blocks of your actuarial science now cm1 is financial mathematics where you will be learning about the project appraisal loan schedule premium calculation cm2 is more related to stock market so we are also into stock market if you want to evaluate a company whether the price of this company the share price will go up or whether it can go down you can do the fundamental and technical analysis for a particular company CS1 again is basic statistics which involves basic probabilities and basic statistical um tools which you will be needing in future papers CS2 again is a higher 
statistical paper which involves again it deals more in the general insurance side uh, modeling side we learn machine learning over here we learn how to value the extreme events for example there is a sudden catastrophic event happening how to model those events all of this we learn in cs2 suddenly there is a covid outbreak and how it affects uh, the insurance companies everything is done in this cb1 involves accountancy basic taxation um, cb2 is full economics micro and macro very interesting cb3 is business management paper where you have different modules and a group study so these are the core seven papers next we have the second level second level has three papers so when i say three papers cp1 cp2 cp3 out of the five easy ones three i already told you the other two easy papers are cp2 and cp3 so cp2 and cp3 cp2 is modeling wherein uh, they will ask you to build a model from scratch on excel and communicate the same in the word cp3 is all communication so communication is also a key aspect and these two papers actually cover the communication part of your actuarial science how are you able to present your views your ideas um to some non technical audience are you able to explain them how the premium is being calculated are you able to explain them how your in, how your emi differs from the emi of someone else if yes then these are the papers will check cp1 is again uh <clears throat> actuarial practice this paper is a little lengthier paper which involves again a lot of different spheres uh, how a life insurance general insurance investment company work pension companies work all of this is covered in your paper cp1 first 10 papers are all compulsory papers which you have to appear for then the third level and the fourth level are specialist papers so for example if you want to specialize in investments then what paper you will appear you will appear for sp5 or maybe sp6 so out of these papers you can select any two you will have to appear for any two paper if you want to specialize in life insurance you will give sp2 and maybe sp1 or people also sit for sp4 if you want to specialize in general insurance you will be appearing for sp7 and sp8 now we also have more papers coming here like banking we have uh, credit risk papers sp10 uh, they are releasing more such options over here because as i discussed the emerging uh, fields of actuaries so we are not only limited to insurance now we are also being hired by uh banking companies investment companies so we can also specialize over there they are introducing more papers in this particular curriculum so this two and then after this you have to appear for the last paper which is your sp level sa level paper so any one you need to appear for any one sa level paper over here it can be either sa3 if you want to specialize in general insurance sa7 like i have specialized in sa7 in investment so depending where you are working in which field interests you you will have to select any one paper so in total you have 13 papers that you want to appear now how and how can i complete these 13 papers so in every year we have two terms wherein the examinations take place so it will be generally in the month of april and may or it will be in the month of september and november so in a year you can actually study uh, or actually sit for minimum two papers if you sit for one paper in one term you can also sit for more than one paper in uh, one term so let's talk about what we have you know um, planned or chalked out for the students they can complete the entire course in four years this is something which i will say uh, depends on student to student we are considering the best case scenario over here given the students follow the guidance and also given they are able to clear all the papers in their first attempt starting from term 1 in term 1 the student will sit for the any one cm1 or cm cs1 uh, which are the core papers i showed you in level 1 and cb1 or cb2 any one of this so two papers over here 
in term 2 again the rest two papers which are left in term 3 we ask students to sit, sit for cs2 cs2 is a higher a little bit lengthier so we don't ask students to sit for any other paper with this but i have a lot of students who appear for uh, more than one paper so maybe they appear for cb2 cb1 or maybe they are also appearing for uh, some cs cs papers along with cs2 then term 4 will be again cm2 if you haven't appeared for CV1, CV2 here, you can definitely opt for it over here. After this, we have term 5, which is again uh, SP, uh, CP1. CP1 is again a lengthier paper. So, this lengthier paper deserves only one single attempt with a single paper. Still, I again have some students appearing for one more paper along with CP1. Then, term 6, wherein you have a specialist paper that you choose which field you want to specialize in along with that a cp2 or a cp3 paper then again specialist paper cp2 or cp3 and the final term will be your essay paper so if given you are clearing all the papers in your first attempt and given that you are following the guidance you can clear your examination in four to four point uh, five years maybe in eight to nine attempts there are students who complete it in five years which is something which uh, is very common nowadays so four to six years on average you need to give to this course uh, every day taking out time like three to four hours consistently studying for this and clearing all the examinations this is a fee structure for IFOA IEI. Now there are two institutes or in fact there are three institutes in India from where you can appear for these courses. So either it can be IFOA which is a UK based institute, IEI is Indian Homegrown Institute and we also have SOA which is a US institute. So these are the three institutes from where you can appear. IFOA and IEI have this similar structure soa has a different a little different uh, structure of examinations let's only talk about uk one and indian one so these are the two institutes these are the different fee structures which i have mentioned in inr obviously and uh, more or less it's same just that it has it has a five to six thousand uh, difference in all the papers uh, there is something called as actual common entrance test this is a basic entrance test that you have to sit for when you appear for iei examinations in case of ifoa which is the uk institute for uk institute you don't have to sit for any entrance test you can appear for either cm1 or cs1 these two paper any these two paper as a non-member once you clear this paper you can take the membership of the institute and you can appear for the next papers so this is the entire structure next let's talk about basic statistics i have mentioned over here um IEI, IFA. So, IEI currently has approximately 570 fellows. When I say fellows, what do you mean by a fellow? So, anyone who completes the first 10 papers, all the core uh, principle and all the core practices, which is your CMCS, CB and CP papers and has a two years of work experience becomes an associate actually. So, we call them as associate actuaries anyone who completes all the 13 papers and has three years of relevant work experience is called a fellow actuary so in case of ia currently we have 570 fellow actuaries in case of uh, these are 231 this is the ifo statistics so you can just have a look uh, how many students are currently there this uh, report might vary because we had prepared this six months back numbers might have changed a little bit recently now let's talk about the salary structure how and when you progress the only best thing about this course one of the best things about this course is that you can get a job even if you have cleared one paper yes it becomes a little difficult to do that but we have students who have gotten a job with one paper nowadays with increase in competition obviously students are clearing six to seven six to eight papers in their graduation and then entering into the job market so provided you have cleared three to six papers 
on average and you have a zero experience meaning you are just a fresher entering into the job market you can expect a salary of 5 to 8 lakhs now uh, let me just tell you all these numbers are very pessimist this can vary this may increase as well so we have taken a very pessimist approach over here so it can be 5 to 8 lakhs per annum anyone who has cleared 5 to 8 papers and has one or two years of experience will be earning 8 to 12 lakhs per annum. With the 10 papers cleared, you become an associate actually and that 10 papers is the first 10 papers that I'm talking about and you have 2 to 3 years of experience, this is how much you earn. Once you become a fellow actually, you have good 4 to 6 years of experience in a good uh, you know, with good proper knowledge, you will be earning somewhere around 22 to 30 lakhs per annum. This number again can vary. There are people who are earning much more than that as well. So this is the basic salary structure from scratch till the very end um, that you can expect to be earning in this particular field. Okay, now let's move to the next aspect. which is uh so this is a basic overview of our institute um we have currently our institute uh we provide coaching for all the first 10 papers um we have uh 30 plus fellow and associate actuaries with us we have taught more than 10,000 students and uh we have 100,000 plus students who are working in the industry uh, we provide 100% lectures. So these are basic uh, things that we have. We have students stretched across the nation and across the globe as well. We have students in Australia, US. Um, so let's talk about the placement cell. We provide placement uh, services to our in-house students that is for free um, we help our students to get placed in the industry anyone who's graduating we help them connect with the companies share their cvs and help them in getting placed along with that we also provide placement assistance in the form of uh, weekend like weekend uh, sessions with industry experts they teach them how to make cvs uh, linkedin profiles how to communicate how to perform in the group discussions personal interviews writing articles all of these things which can help you uh, while sitting in an uh, interview or you know preparing an interview we help our students to do that and also making sure that they get the job these are the few student reviews that we have so meet our faculty members we have ankit patwari we have shivangi agarwal uh, vivek patwari we have praveen patwari praveen sanchiti and Vandita Sada. These are few companies. This is not an exhaustive list, obviously. These are few companies who are hiring actual students. This is not an exhaustive list. We can, as you all can see, we have general insurance in the previous slide I showed you. Uh, some other companies we have health insurance, life insurance, investment banking firms pension valuation reinsurance firms these are this is not an exhaustive list but we have more than uh, these companies in india who are hiring actual candidates we have lot of startups in consulting coming in uh, recently who are also hiring actual candidates we are also having a lot of um, online companies uk and us based who are also hiring uh, indian actual students this is a very small placement report which i prepared recently but obviously we have more students getting placed um, we provide scholarship to students who are not uh, very much financially able to uh, give the coaching fees so we also have that uh, which is known as pravesh thakur scholarship pravesh thakur was one of our one of our students uh, this is the basic detail about us. 
and if you all have any questions now you all can put it down in the chat box and we can reply uh, we were actually replying um, through on the chats now uh, just one quick overview as to uh, what is the future next 5 years of in this course in this career as an actuarial science so as you all can see uh, anywhere where there is a risk financial risk um we are involved so not only insurance but anywhere you see risk the word risk coming in the credit risk financial risk operational risk there is someone who can work is us which is an actuarial science student we have after going through all the 13 papers we have become so versatile um with the level of knowledge that we can put forward and the level of communication that we have built and the kind of professionalism that we show and that our institutes um you know they have their thing this thing in curriculum that we uh properly with ethics and professionalism convey and communicate that we can be work we can be there working in all these different fields so nowadays now also we have something called as fdi foreign direct investment coming in in insurance sector wherein um, the companies outside of india can come invest in india they can form their companies they can sell their products uh, which is also supported by the government and so more and more jobs are not only coming in the core insurance fields but also the other fields are recognizing the importance of an actuarial candidate and they are coming in and hiring the actuarial students so if you all have any further doubts you all can put it down in the chat box or you can just unmute and discuss yeah go ahead we i can hear you okay since i don't think uh, you all have the doubts we can put our uh, contact number in the we can we are putting the contact number in the chat box so you can just uh, talk to us and uh, also you can follow us on our social media under the name actuators educational institute and let us know if you have any further queries